welcome to the last talk of this day, um, which is held by Baptiste Daroussin uh, from the FreeBSD Ports team. Um, and it's, uh, the talk is called FreeBSD Towards Ports V2, Trimming the Biggest Bonsai, whatever that means. Hello, I'm Baptiste Daroussin. I'm a FreeBSD committer, both source and port. I'm responsible for uh, PackageNG. And the last three years, we have done a couple of small changes in the port three. And I'm going to talk about that and to explain what we have done, why, uh, what is coming next, and what changes you can expect in the next years. So first, I'll give you uh, a couple of numbers about the pot tree. So the number should, uh, should be two days old, which should be quite accurate. We have more than 24,000 ports. Uh, a few of them are broken, not that much. Uh, we have a couple of deprecated ports. So if you want to save them before I rip them out, uh, have a look at them and try to either uh, find a new upstream or look why it's deprecated and what it's going to remove. Uh, the reality is um, the package we managed to build because on all those ports some are just for one architecture or one other. So the reality is uh, um, last Wednesday the, la the latest build was around uh, 23,000 packages built for 8 and 9. We have a bit less packages uh, for 10 and 11 because uh, mostly uh, it's uh, Clang refusing to build because uh, it's using uh, bad codes and uh, there is a lot of errors you can fix. M most of the time it's quite easy to fix. So if you want to uh, improve that, you can just go to uh, Potsmon and have a look at the packages that doesn't build and try to get one, fix it. The post tree is not only used on FreeBSD, it's also used on uh, Dragonfly uh, since one year, I think, about. And uh, they managed to get uh, 20,000 packages, almost 21,000. So they are pretty close to uh, the same numbers as we have on FreeBSD. And I think there is a couple of issues that have been fixed recently, so next build should be even better. We have since... Uh, December created a um, new branch of packages for a uh, new branch in the post tree for which we build packages. It's called quarterly. It's, um, it's uh, a branch where we keep stable ports for three months and maintain them for three months. So we had um, built, we just commit into that branch build fixes, security fixes, and uh, runtime fixes. We maintain them for three months. Right now, we just build them for 10. So uh, if you're using uh, PackageNG and you can change the, the repository instead of saying, I want the latest packages, you, place, you replace latest by quarterly, and you get packages that just get the security fixes. In three months, it will be a new snapshot from the post tree. And uh, we will rebuild packages on that, and we will keep them for three months. It's an experiment. Uh, we want to provide um, package, stable packages because a lot of people are expecting them, but it's also a lot of work for committers to be able to maintain that list. So we are experimenting one branch by one branch for now. So one branch, three months. If it works, if we manage to do that without too much workload, then we will probably push um, the support for one year, and we will maintain four different branches during one year. So the pot three is great because it allows us to have all those packages, all those stuff. But the pot three is uh, has a lot of problems and. I, I'd like to say had a lot of problems. We have solved a lot of them in the last three years. So it has bad reputation um, in some other, compared to some other package system. Why? Because we have a lot of deprecated code. We are very good at adding new things all the time, 
but we never remove the, the old things and we never make sure that all the port 3 is up to date with the new things we have changed that make is not the best tool to do what we do with the port 3 but we have it so we will keep it but we have to know how it works exactly how it does thing in the background so that the port 3 is efficient in terms of performance in terms of features using that tool that's something that was uh, left behind for a long time in the port 3 and there is a lot of there was a lot of inefficient code and a lot of inefficient behavior in the ports because a lot of people don't really know how makes work it's not just some variables and do things it's way more behind for example um, we have way too many targets defined I don't remember the exact number but uh, in the basic ports you have something like three uh, um, 300 targets defined and all of this cost because make has to go through all of them and with bmake it's better because bmake has if i remember well a hash table to how to get them so you can get it fast but with the old make we had it was a linked list so each time you have to go through the whole list again and again and again we have too many files to parse and we parse those files too many times each time you do um, include bsd.pod on something it will reparse all the bsd.pod.m key this is totally inefficient um, has the pod has grown there was little care done in uh, the infrastructure to to be able to have uh, a clean separation uh, and between what you predefine all the variables all the things and then what you will do so bsd.pod.mk has become a huge mess of things and it's really hard to say oh I need to add this target I will add it in this place not in this place because I don't know it should be done before pre mk or post mk it's really hard because it can blow up because one variable is not yet defined so we have to separate to make sure that all targets are defined only when all variables are defined we have we had a lot of old badly maintained ports basically when someone is not interested anymore in the ports you just say okay I drop maintainership on it I put ports at or I just don't reply the mail so I still have my uh, my maintainership on it but I don't do anything and we keep those ports in the port tree they are often broken outdated um, not using the new features not up to date with the new way we do things in the post tree and they are taking a lot of time in, in the clusters they are taking a lot of time everywhere so we don't need to have the post tree being something like web archive we just need things that works and that people cares about we had some arbitrary limitation uh, for example uh, someone one day decided that FreeBSD could not load libraries where the name is dot so dot one dot three dot four someone decided that we can only have one number after dot so this is totally wrong we can prop we can properly handle whatever name is uh, the name of the library but in the pod three we decided in that case to limit everything to that name meaning that we have a lot of hacks everywhere so that the port when it builds the library change the name to just have one number after dot so we have a lot of complex code um, because we have added new features or trying to fix things um, on the flow without a large vision of what we will what do you really want that thing uh, how we want that thing to behave then we are building more and more complex code so we need to and we have to go through all that complex code try to figure out what is the real problem it tries to fix and write something cleaner and simpler but we don't have 
anything to enforce policy. For example, if we had a new macro that does a lot of fancy good things, we had nothing to say, OK, I had to change the whole post three so that we don't have three, four, five different versions of something doing the same thing. We have a lot of inconsistencies in the name, in the options, in in um, in the way we are trying to fix things in the port. For example, force the ports to put the PC file in the right place. Each time, people are reinventing the same thing in a different way, and sometimes in a bad way. So one of the first things we have done has been to uh, trim all the dead code because we had a lot of dead code in the in the port three to in order to to make the bsd.port.mk more readable and more performant. So for example, we have removed uh, code that was only uh, make version. Uh, there was a change between FreeBSD 4 and FreeBSD 5 in make, and we had ports to handle that. You, we have a code to handle that. That's totally not necessary anymore. We have re removed that. We do not handle any category page for a, a long time anymore, but we still have a huge. We still had a huge code to handle that. We have removed that. We have a lot of obsolete macros that um, are not in use anymore in, in the post three and. But we still, we still have got to handle them. We have removed that. We have fetched in the base system for very, very long now. So we removed the ability to fall back to FTP and all the code that goes with that. We have changed the option framework. I will speak a bit, a bit more about it. But we have changed the option framework. So we have removed all the complex code to handle the old option framework. And we had a lot of old, unnecessary anymore uses, like uh, uses to handle uh, X3. X3 is gone for long. We have Xorg for very long, so we have removed that. So we have also tried to um, figure out how we can improve our uh, make usage. It can. Each time we can we, we can um, save one second on the build thing is very important for us because one second times the number of ports can give you one more day to build the whole port tree. So one of the things that has recently been committed into the um, into the framework is we do not anymore define target all the time. We define the target and then we we create the target and then we really define them if they are needed by the port. We don't fall back anymore on do nada, which will run the bin through for nothing. We just say, OK, this port doesn't need to do anything in post-patch. We just don't define post-patch. That allows us to remove around uh, 80 targets on the basic port and save a lot of time on uh, the cluster. We have reduce the number of shell invocation. In make, each line on a target will invoke sh a shell. So it's better to have inline shell, but the problem of inline shell is pretty ugly to read. One of the way we have done to, one of the things we have done to reduce the number of shell invocation is to basically remove all this inline code and all the complex targets, move it into a script, and having one line calling that script. So we invoke the shell only one. That saves a lot of time on the clusters. We have trying to reduce. We are trying to reduce the size of the infrastructure, the size of the files that will be passed by make. One of the thing is we have introduced what we call the uses. Uses basically is a very very small um, make file, which is loaded if and only if a pod needs it. So basically, it says it's try to do one thing, one thing. So it's easy to read. You know exactly what it concerns and how to. You can easily uh, understand it. You can easily maintain it. And when you create a port, you just say, "I use this feature." So only in that case, I will pass this file. So that reduces the size of bsd.port.mk. That reduces the number of things we have to pass. 
and that's better for performance. We have also um, reorganized a bit uh, the code. It's not finished yet, but we have. I'm, um, I have pushed all the tar all the target or most of the target definition in the end of bsd.port.mk so that when we are actually doing something with the target, we are sure that all the variables, all the testing, whatever you can do on variables list, whatever, is done before. And it's very easier now to say, okay, this part is for the target, I know what I'm going to modify there and I know the impact on the rest. One of the other thing is um, we often do modification on files like changing the chebang, changing uh, um, stripping binaries, um, converting from those to Unix, and we used to do that file by file. If you have a port, you're converting from those to Unix, and you're doing that um, on I don't know uh, 100 source files. It's highly inefficient. So most of the new code try to always use XARGs, and that improves a lot of time in uh, the clusters. We are now trying. Yes. Well, uh, when we first tried to build the, on, on the new machines, uh, the pod three, we were around uh, 24 hours for uh, a full build. Now we are 18, 18 hours for a full build. So we saved uh, around six hours. But it's hard to define what exactly helped in what place because we also improved the code of the, the builder itself since. But basically we save around six hours. So we have now we are we are now doing some cleanup in the port three to avoid keeping all the old stuff we don't care anymore because it's broken or whatever. In three years we have removed around uh well it's a bit more now. Uh we have removed about um five thousand ports from the port three. And the number of ports we have is still growing. We have finally managed to remove GNOME 1. <laughs> yeah, we still had GNOME 1. We removed KDE 3. We still have XMMS. And unfortunately, we still have at least one user of XMMS. So I'm not sure it will be removed soon. We have also reduced port duplication. A lot of ports are duplicated each time they are changing their ABI or have a lot of change in the API so that we can still have the ports that have not been switched yet to the new version of the state library um, be able to build and be usable. The problem is one day all the ports using the old libraries are using the new one and no one cares about the new one. So we kept having for ICU for example we had five different versions in the post three, only one was used. ICU is a complicated beast. It takes a lot of time to build. We don't need, so we now try to take care about the versions we have in the post three and to remove all version. We also try to avoid having always a numbered version. We can have something like if you have a look at VirtualBox, you don't have VirtualBox version A, version B, you have VirtualBox and VirtualBox legacy, so that each time we go to a new version, we do it in the, we push the old version into legacy, and that avoid us forgetting about removing the old version we don't need when it's not supported anymore. Reduce code complexity. Well, make is quite com can quickly be quite complex and quite unreadable. Trying to factorize code in make and reuse code in make is also very complicated. Make is not done to really be able to factorize. But we still managed to do it. We had complex code to handle the different build system uh, like um, gmake, make, ninja, 
uh, and whatever other things exist, they were all basically uh, running the same command with just a few arguments different. So what we did is, okay, it's the same command, few arguments different. Why do we hard code each time? Why do we duplicate it code and why do we hard code each time the name of the builder? Just create a new macro, which is the name of the builder. And if you have uh, arguments you do not support, just over overwrite the, the other variables. Doing that, we removed uh, a lot of duplicated code. The other good thing about that is now, if we had to change, uh, we had to add a new environment variable uh, for the build system. We just have to do it in one place, and all the all the build targets will benefit from that in one place. Before that, we used to add it for GMake, and then we forgot about Ant, and we forgot about Ruby, whatever, and things like this. We also, uh, with the uses, we also try to share the tips that usually you'd, you'll had from a committer that knows that, oh, I know that this is often failing, you should do that and duplicate, duplicate that code in each port or create a very complicated thing in a bsd.something.mk. For example, we had um, Gnome hack which was in bsd.gnome.mk, you could have only with used Gnome, so people do working on something totally different than Gnome, most of the time didn't figure out that we already have something to fix their problem, but it was in, in Gnome. So what we did is we extract that into a small uses, we try to name it with a name explaining what it does, we document it in the handbook, and now we have a lot of things to help you, uh, to help you doing things. For example, we have desk hack. That's something I stole from the OpenBSD port, which is something helping with uh, stagif stagifying ports that are not desd aware. I will speak again about stage in a few minutes. We have passfix, which, which is uh, what was called before GNOME hack, which basically goes through um, the make files uh, for um, auto tool port and try to figure out common paths that are wrong and that doesn't match is what FreeBSD wants. Uh, we have uh, UID fix, which allows our Mac system to um, install things as a user. We have Shebang fix to be able to fix all the Shebang so that we point to the right place instead of each time having each maintainer adding a new set something. We have fixed lib depends, so now we do not require having dot so dot one number, but we, do, we can have a full normal line. We have almost fixed lib tool, because for the same reason we had a problem with lib depends, we had a problem with lib tool because someone told the lib tool guy that we had this limitation we don't have, in fact. So they wrote lib tool that way. The problem is we don't have this limitation, and if you go through um, glib ports, for example, you will discover that with our version of lib tool, every single minor minor version will bump the um, library number, which is very not good. That's really something you don't want because you will end up having to rebuild all the ports depending on glib for nothing. What we end up doing is instead of going through why libtool does that, why we have this problem, we say, oh, let's write a new hack. And we re rewrote uh, LT hack, LT ver hack, I don't remember, or both. Yeah. So we wrote, we wrote a couple of hacks plus all the things that were done manually port by port by other people. Where we could just we could just fix libtool. So what we ended up doing is uh, we created a new uses which is called libtool. What it does is it goes through all the configuration files, all the com new configure files, and apply a couple of set lines to fix libtool. And we don't have this problem anymore. And we are working on upstreaming the change so that our main libtool will be properly working on FreeBSD by default. And we have now that we have st the stage directory, we can automate a lot of tasks we couldn't before. That's, that helps to 
enforce uh, policies or help maintainers to check, for example, if binaries are stripped, if there is a script with the wrong shebang, if uh, we are referencing bad paths, if um, all, 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 the, all of this kind of uh, QA. And it also helps to simplify things. Until now, we were installing everything on the system and then we try to go through each man page to compress it. So we had to define all the man page. Right now, we can just go through the stage directory and say, oh, there is new man page. I can take all of them, compress them, do what I want to do with them. And we will soon do the same thing for the info page. <coughs> We have improved the QA. With the stage directory, we have the new stage QA I was just saying about before. It's not activated by default because it costs a lot of time. But if you're a maintainer, just add developer equal yes into your make.conf and then it will be activated by default. It checks a lot of things. You, I really recommend that you add developer equal yes into your make.conf. We have also been able to handle the stage configuration, the stage support very, very quickly. I think, if I remember well, in package source, it took something like three years. It's not finished. I thought I've seen a mail saying it was finished recently. Okay. Okay. So what we have done is, in four months, we have converted 62 percent of the port tree. And my plan is to say, uh, in four months, everything should be converted. If something is not converted, there is, there should be only one reason, a bug in the framework, and then we have to fix that bug. If not, that means no one cares about this pot, and this pot will be removed from the pot stream. And we have the new bsd.sanity.mk to help people to um, in touch with the new things, to be aware about the new way of doing things, the new way of defining um, a feature or a functionality in the port. We now report them what is deprecated, what is new. We can report them that they should use this uses because their port have um, a desktop file, so you probably want to register the desktop the desktop file uh, on in post installation. We can also warn the users that without NLS is deprecated and unsupported. We now have with a new option a very convenient way to define always the same way and consistent way global options like I don't want docs, I don't want it's not oh this time it's no port docs. Oh no this time it's without X eleven. Oh this time it's I don't want something. So we can run user when we remove things, and we can run maintainer when sh things are ch have changed or things are not supported anymore. And we have added two new shiny targets, which will help a lot of people. Make, make plist, that will just create the plist for you. You just have to review, add eventually some plist sub, but that does it. And make checker funds, you do an update. You do make stage, you have everything in your stage, you do make checker funds, and it just give you what files you have forgotten in your plist. And last thing, we are now able to package without the root credential. So you can just go somewhere, say make package, and you have a package 100% uh, built as a user. We have improved consistency through the new option framework. So what it does is basically allow the normal option we had before but it also had the single option. You say you need one and only one op uh, one or zero among n options. We have the radio, which is one and only one in that list. Group option is just for convenience and saying, okay, this is all concerning the same thing. I can choose how many I want in them, but I want them to be packed together so that for the user it's cleaner. And we have um, multi option, which say. I need at least one, but probably more, in that options. We also added a feature few people know about. Only the Apache port is using it for now. But if you're a maintainer and you had the package-help in your port tree, 
you have the dialogue for the option you, you hit F1 and you have a new dialogue opening with a description, uh, a help you can provide, a long help you can provide on, on the port. So if you're a maintainer, you think your options are complex to understand, just add this. We are deprecating, deprecating knobs. All the knobs are inconsistent, used or not, so we are removing it. We will go through option for everything. We promote uses instead of adding all the time new thing into bsd.pod.mk. Just write a new use. We can add it, test it. The good thing is if you modify your use, you don't break all the ports three, but only a couple of ports, so it's easier to maintain, easier to get in because even if it's half broken, half working, we can add it and then improve on the flow. And we have introduced default version, that's for users. Right now, if you want to specify the version of PHP you want when you're building, you have one thing to add to make.conf. But if you want to specify the version of Ruby you want, it's another thing, another string. Now you have just one macro, which is default version, and you say Lua equal 5.2, and you have 5.2 by default. You say Python equal 3.3, .3 and you have Python 3 by default. And every single thing with multi-version will go through that way slowly. So we are each time we are improving those ports, we are adding the support into default version. So for users, there is only one thing to care about. We have added option helpers. I, I just show a quick example on how it helps. It helps in two things. First, it's shorter, so it's easier to read. Second, it, it avoids having to include twice bsd.port.mk, which improves the speed of make because it doesn't have to parse it twice. And last, I find it more readable and more un understandable. We have way more options uh, than configure. We have configure enable, configure with, uh, we have configure off, configure on. We can do that for CMake, for um, all the environment variables, for um, for for a lot of things. Have a look at the. It's in the handbook. Have a look at the handbook. You have a lot of a lot of helpers. Most of the time now, you just need the single include in the end. Nothing more. How were things were done um, before we had staging? So, basically, you. When you start, you just fetch. So it tries to fetch. Then you, 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 the, the next target is usually extract and all that goes with. You extract, you configure, you build. You think you will install, but you mess your system. There is different way of messing your system with the old way. First, there is the files that are not properly tracked. That's a problem, but you can live with that. It's not good, we, it should be fixed, but you can live with that. But there is also make install fails in the middle. It has installed a couple of files somewhere in your file system. It has broken a lot of things, other things, and then you end up with a, a non-working system. If it's getx that fails, you end up with half of your ports not working because you don't have lib getx installed, but you have some things from getx still in your file system. How things goes now is um, the new uh, way of uh, um, of doing things with uh, staging. We still fetch, we still extract, we still configure, we stage, and then we can decide to package from the stage. No need to install. Or we can install. The install phase, what it does is it makes sure that the stage is clean, that all the things I want to install are in the stage, and those installation only when the stage is clean. So if getx fails, it won't be installed on your system, and you still have the old version of getx, and your system is still working. This is with package ng. With package install, it's a bit different because package install. So what next? Um, we are dropping support for package install. Package install is uh, now the bottleneck for improvement in the port three and for improvement in um, in uh, in the way we handle the packages. We, have, we are doing way 
two dirty things right now in the package, even in package ng, just because we have to support the way package install did things. So we will drop it, and we will drop it for all releases of FreeBSD at the same time. We were aiming at doing that for um, May this year, but it's we haven't announced it, so we don't have time. We don't let leave time enough for people to to migrate. So we will probably push that to September this year. The reason why we aim that May is because every single version of FreeBSD release but 8.3 has a bootstrap and is able to um, install package automatically. But FreeBSD 8.3 doesn't have and FreeBSD uh, 8.3 is end of line in May. We will provide sub packages. Instead of having tons of Qt ports, tons of uh, PHP port, you will have just one PHP port you do make and it will create all the different packages. And we will provide a way for the user to say, I just want to build this package. It will say, okay, this package needs this sub package, this sub package, and only build what you need. You, you won't build everything, but you have one single port to maintain and you can create multiple ports out of that. We will add provide requires. People are often asking why we don't have flavors yet because OpenBSD has flavors. Provide requires is a way to do the same thing, but it's, in my opinion, way better. Provide require with, instead of saying, I depend on Perl version, I say I require Perl, the binary Perl. So there is no reason why I need this particular version of Perl or this particular version of Perl. Right now, on our package system, when you install, a Perl script, it will depend on a version, a precise version of Perl. So you just say now, require Perl, and the Perl say, I do provide Perl, and you can have it properly. You can also say, I'm Image Magic, so I provide Image Magic, and I provide both Image Magic and Image Magic uh, without X11. And Image Magic X11 without X11 will just provide Image Magic without X11. So if you need Image Magic with X11, you say I require Image Magic with X11. Doing that, you can do exactly what the the flavors are doing, but in a simpler way. We will provide auto p list. Maintaining the p list is painful for most most of people. The thing is, the plist is very important for package install because package install sees it as a script, and it follows the sequence to do things. With the end of line of package install, we don't have the limitation we had before on the plist, so we will provide a way to say, pack everything that is in the state directory. You don't need to uh, pack uh, to um, specify because I know that, and we'll provide a way to say, oh, wait, I need to apply this keyword. I used to do in the plist for this file. So you will just say, I have a special file. All the rest, you pack it normally. It's a bit like what Debian does in, uh, in the bridge system. And we are going to cross compilation and to have a working cross compilation. Uh, right now, I'm able to build uh, on an AMD64 machine. Uh, don't remember the number. It was quite close to 10,000, to cross-build 10,000 ports for ARM. And I'm going further and I want to be able to cross-build at least 90% of the ports tree. But cross-compilation is quite complicated. It's simpler to do one by one. But if you want to automate that and to make sure that the framework is properly getting the right dependencies and not doing too many things, it's very complicated. And right now, all what I've done is not able to go through the port tree like this because uh, it will require too many manual things from the users. Basically, when you are cross compiling, you need uh, cross uh, a target arch. You need to say, I'm building for MIPS 64, whatever. You need a destination directory where your uh, libraries and uh, binaries for the target are installed. But you also need to have the dependencies, uh, smart dependencies. 
because um, if my port is depending on Python uh, and not linking to Python, I just need at the moment I build the port, the native Python. I don't need the other one. So I don't need to install the other one. But if I'm using libxml2, I will need to be linked to the, the, the version, the target version. So I have to have libxml2 install both on the native and the target. Or sometimes it's just I, need, I only need the library on the target. That's quite complicated to do. We have two ways to handle uh, cross-compilation. We have cross-compilation and we have emulation. We want cross-compilation for everything. So basically we had a new target which is X build safe and say this port is safe for cross-compilation, just do it. But there is some very complicated ports to, uh, to cross-build. And for those ports, if we can't manage to have cross-compilation working, we will just mark them as unsafe. In that case, it will switch. Instead of cross-compiling, we will just use uh, the QMU user emulation for this particular port. We have a lot of work that has been done by Stacy Son um, on QMU user emulation. So the BSD user emulation, at least for FreeBSD, is now working for MIPS. And um, we have a modified version of Poudrière to be able to handle uh, this. And we have a new kernel module that is not committed yet, but will be soon, which is able to say, OK, uh, if you are going to run this, for example, a, a MIPS64 binary, then prepend QMU the right line before that. So we can use, without having to emulate the wall box, we can use emulation to be able to handle those ports. And we can go even further. We can say, OK, every binary is, but the compiler will be uh, run through the emulation. So we can still have the cross build compiler running at the native, um, the native speed and have the rest emulated so that the, the overhead of the, the emulation is not that high. That's all. Do you have any questions? Which one? It is in. It is in. That's a summary of what I did for the last three years and what is coming. So basically, uh, most of the cleanup has been done. There is uh, still a lot to do, but. All done except uh, what was, well, except that part. And right now, for the staging, we only have 62% of the ports. So we have still around 9,000 ports to convert. Yeah, the handbook is up to date. We try to, uh, to make it up to date. It, it was lagging a bit behind for. Uh, for two years, last two years, because I'm not very good at documenting, but right now we are. <laughs> but right now we have uh, people that are going through my commit and saying, ah, this needs to be committed, <laughs> this needs to be documented, so. Yes? Overhead. For package install, we do that. Because package install has no way to do uh, another way, but package ng is able to uh, use the directory as a package. So what it does is basically the same as creating the package, but instead of putting everything into a tar file, it puts everything into your file system. Yes. There is no problem, just go through the problem you want and send a PR and uh, if your PR is still in GNATS after two or three weeks, go through IRC and yell to someone and say, hey. But yeah, we we have a lot of PR and we lack people to go through GNATS and have a look at PRs and 
try to take them and commit them. But uh, basically, uh, just go on the mailing list and say, why my PR is still on there? Is it not good? Is it? Uh, or just try to find a committer somewhere in the channel or uh, a mail directly. You know that, I don't know, you have something using Java, then you send a mail to uh, one of the people you know that is using Java for, for example, Greg Lewis or whoever is interested in Java because he works on that and they say, what do you think about that? The thing is also for, we have now a, a lot of good infrastructure to help people uh, which are non-commuters to work on on our port tree. We have RedPorts. RedPorts is uh, basically um, um, a repository where you push your, it's, it's a SVN repository, you can put your uh, work in progress uh, ports and then you can say, okay, try to build it on every single version of FreeBSD supported and it will send you a mail saying, okay, you have this problem here, this problem here, so you can prepare everything properly into uh, into red ports. You don't have to create your, your own, to set up your own Tinder box. You don't have to do too many things yourself uh, on your box. You can use the resources we have and we propose to the users. Yeah. No, redpods.org. It should be one day redpods.freebsd.org. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not a maintainer of Redpot. Uh I think there is already something for that. Uh, they're not. Uh, I don't remember because uh, I don't use much uh, Redpot. I have my own build system, but uh, I think there is an option. I, it's not trivial, and I'm not sure it's documented. But uh, probably send a mail to uh, to uh, DK or um, or Matt and uh, ask them. Yes. It's on my laptop and my head, because now the reason is because it's rather complex right now, so it needs a modified version of Pudria. It needs um, a lot of manual patches into the post tree. Uh, it, it's really not user friendly yet. It's and it needs a lot of cleanup because I've tried a lot of direction. I have, go, I have been looking at what uh, package source is doing. I have been looking at how GBN is doing, how others are doing. So I tried different direction until I have something that is able to build more than 5,000 packages. With 5,000 packaging, including complex one, now I think I have the, a good direction. I need to clean up to make that user-friendly, well, as user-friendly as we can, and then, yes, it will be uh, available. Right now, you can cross-build um, pretty straightforward. I can send uh, or put a wiki for that for MIPS using emulation, because Poudrier is already uh, knowing about um, uh, about all these uh, QMU things, and uh, you just have to grab uh, stasis and patches for the uh, the kernel. There is a new kernel module, and there is a new bin module, and it does all the magic by itself. So MIPS works, but for the others, not yet. And uh, QMU emula user emulation for ARM is totally broken, and uh, someone needs to have a look at it. And basically, it's, it's not that hard. It's mapping uh, syscalls. So you have a huge you have a huge use case and say oh I have this is call it should be that in ARM I will call this one which is the local one and whatever. So that that's uh, a port pro uh, a problem for specific to subversion. It's not a global ports problem. 
So no, nothing has been done. I wasn't aware of this problem since I only used the latest version. And uh, you should still be able to install both. And there is not that much thing that depends on subversion except uh, Git SVN. Is that the one you want? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it says you need to, to talk to the maintainer of subversion so that he fix that. Uh, the patch is. Yeah. 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 It's subversion should definitely go through the default version, so you can you can set. And the other thing is subversion support renaming the binaries, so subversion uh, SVN become becomes SVN, I don't know, one seven for example, and then you can have both installed without any conflict. So no nobody is working on the as far as I know nobody is working on that. But I think I think send a PR send a PR about that and uh, both maintainer of of uh, subversion should have a look at it and probably fix. Okay. Thank you. So thanks all for coming. This is the end of the BSD dev room at FOSDEM. Um, when you go out, please take out any trash you find laying around, even if it's not your own. Thank you.